Greetings, my name is Dennis Daniels and this is part three of the Sigwin Unix tutorial. Sigwin is not Unix, you've heard that before from me if you've seen tutorial one, two, or two A. In this tutorial, as in all the others, you'll need to or should go to sigwin.com and check it out and as well uh, be it known Let's see, is it going to launch the browser for me? No. I click on it. Oh, okay, it will load. Okay. This is a tutorial that I found uh, quite useful by M. Stone Bank, uh, created in 19 October 2001 under the Creative Commons license. And I found it <coughs> through the magic of delicious uh, take a look at my delicious links and you'll see right here Unix tutorial for beginners 240 other 243 other people have decided this is a good site for Unix so uh, that said let's get into it and we will be looking at redirection redirecting output redirecting input and the use of pipes this is the symbol for a pipe right there. Uh, by the way, I'm using Demo Studio on my XP box. <coughs> uh, looking for a tool for Linux that will help me do screencasts as well. Uh, screencasting for Linux is thin to none. That's why I'm focusing on Sigwin until I find a tool that fits my needs. Alright, Unix Tutorial 3. Uh, zoom in a little bit using Firefox and the process of uh, redirection etc is pretty powerful I don't know oh there is nothing really nothing equivalent to it in uh, Windows uh, Mac has it as well, but it's buried in the terminal. And you ask most Mac users where their terminal is, they'll give you kind of a blank stare. 10.3 users, 10.2, etc. But let's go ahead and take a look at it, what it looks like for us under XP. Start D, start, I'm looking for Sigwin. There it is, Sigwin bash cell. Sigwin bash shell. Okay, so it'll take a second for it to start. There it is. Now, uh, because it's going to be really hard for you to read, I'm going to open up Xterm and I'm going to adjust the font size. I'll show you how to do that. Xterm. Let's do a history negative 20. Let's see if that. Uh, uh, history 20, there it is. Okay, let's try history 30. What I'm looking for, uh, history, grep, history. Uh, no, I want to grep for uh, Arial. That's the font I was using for my X term prior. Okay, let's just simplify it. We're going to history. We're going to redirect it out to a history file, which is basically what we were going to be doing here in the moment. Anyway, history. Uh, today is the 1 Feb. txt. There it is. Now I can grep it. Grep. Uh, I want to grep for Arial in my history one fed text. Okay, that didn't work. Um, let's grip X term to see what that does. Nothing. History. Oh, that's even more curious. There's nothing in my history file. Uh, I am a little confused now because normally when you do history it should spew out everything I've done 
here to now. Um, don't know why this is doing this. So, let's pause. Hello, back again. Don't know why we are having so much trouble, but uh, it's fixed now for whatever reason. So I'm going to start the terminal at a larger font size right here, Arial 36. Now everybody at home can read along with us. Now, I found, uh, went on the web and dug around a little bit to find some support to find why my history wasn't showing, but it's showing now. In fact, let's go ahead and before I go much further, I'm going to write the history file <coughs> to uh, SIG drive. SIG drive C uh, Q documents and settings ABC desktop history one feb at txt so I'll have that for future use. Now uh, let me just do that command again. Alt arrow up one, control A. Now I can do this, L, L, LS, I'm going to LS my desktop so you can see that I can show that. And that's everything that's on my desktop right now, on my Windows desktop. Uh, it's showing the ISO that I just downloaded, downloads, history, my HTML folder, and the Kubuntu ISO, which, hey, just finished installing, downloading. So, uh, LL, no, clear, and let's go back to our tutorial. Cat, okay, now cat means catenate. What we'll do here is follow the instructions. Type a few words on the keyboard and press the return key. Let's do that. Cat, a few words on the keyboard. Hello, you are terrific. And control D. Now what's that it's just done is what you just saw. If you run the cat command without specifying a file to read, it reads the standard input and on receiving copies of the standard output, the screen, which is what it did. Now we can do the same thing with a cat and we'll focus on cat this time. So we're gonna do cat cat list one okay so let's do that cat and it wants us to use the redirect cat list for list and that's xd we'll call it that now let's give some fruit apple orange banana uh, pineapple and let's see what do I have to do when I'm done I type the return after each one yes I did that and then control D to stop control D to stop and there it is now uh, let's go ahead and cat my fruit list and you can see that everything inside my fruit list, or everything I did, I typed after cat fruit list at txt is now in the fruit list. And I'll vim it to show you what I mean. There it is. There's all of my my words I just typed in. That's a, I opened it with vim. Escape, Q, bang. Okay. So that's ca uh, that's catting documents and using cat to redirect. So we'll pause here and uh, let you and me regroup my brain. Uh, little problems there. Screencast, do them yourself. Use Demo Studio on your XP box. It's a great little tool. Share the wealth of your own screencasts. Uh, let's uh, acknowledge the, the developed and developing world shared one 
crucial feature. Most teachers are still using 18th century tools and techniques. We can fix it by making more screencasts and putting more computers in front of students. Building an LTSP network in your business, home, school, or community center can do worlds to promote Linux and uh, usage of brains and computers in the classroom. I want to thank you uh, for your time. If this helped you, please send me an email below at the address below. I want to thank you again and happy commuting.